Hello everyone and welcome to Passion Talk, an inspirational and immersive series of talks by the Times of India and Times Passion Train. Magic Moments Verb Music Series presents Tales Behind Cocktails. This series of ours which is a specially curated masterclass of experts talking about their skills, the craft, the inspiration and the passion behind it. For this series of ours, our experts have specially curated masterclasses bringing unique pearls of wisdom only they bring to the world. So let's enjoy these mixology magic moments narrated to us with the verb that only these legends can. Our guest today is well-known bartender, published author of a cocktail book, Cocktails and Dreams, entrepreneur and co-owner of award-winning bars Sidecar in New Delhi and Cocktails and Dreams Speakeasy in Gurgaon. Yang Dup Lama is one of India's foremost beverage professionals. He is also brains behind Cocktails and Dreams Bar School, providing holistic training for aspiring bar professionals as well as bar and beverage consultancy services. With a journey spanning over two decades, he is best known for his relentless efforts in shaping the spirits and cocktail culture in India as a trainer, ambassador and mentor. Till date, Yang Dup is one of India's most revered consultant and beverage trainers for top hotels and restaurant chains and the master trainer for various bartender programs. Let's enjoy the magic moments of this illustrious journey narrated with verb by the man himself. Welcome to Passion Talk, Yang Dup. Let's start from the start, Yang Dup. Uh, it has been a two decade long journey. Tell us how did it start, where did it start and the journey so far. So it all started way back in 1995 when uh, you know I came into Delhi. So I come from a small little village in the district of Darjeeling. And after having completed my hotel management in Calcutta is when I moved on to Delhi to join a hotel, the Hyatt Regency. And that's where the journey took off. Uh, accidentally, I was placed in the bar. So I was sent to work at the bar with no idea of what bartending was. But as I started working at the bar, mostly on the floor, doing all of the stores and cleaning of the glasses, when I realized I wanted to be a bartender. So that's where it actually took off. And almost like, almost two years into bartending is when uh, I got the first award. And this was way back, it was called the Hotel and Food Service Awards and I was recognized as India's best bartender. And that was very, very encouraging at a very, very early stage in my life. And that's when I looked at myself more as a bartender rather than a hotelier. And I served the Hyatt for about four and a half years. And around mid-1999 is when I quit the Hyatt and I went on my own as a freelance bartender and set up a mobile bartending company called Cocktails and Dreams. And then of course the bartending school as well. And that, that went on for uh, almost, almost a decade. And uh, interestingly, in the year 2012 is when I got to kind of set up my dream bar, which is Cocktails and Dreams Speakeasy in Gurgaon, and probably the first bartender's bar in the country. And yeah, that's in a, in a nutshell, that's been my journey over the years. So 1999, you left a settled job to start a bar consultancy. This is unheard of at that point of time. What made you take that decision? You just passion for drinks? You think you, we were ready for such a concept? You will be able to sustain yourself? You know, when I resigned from the Hyatt, I had an exit interview with my HR. And uh, I had a good record, so my merit was quite nice. And the hotel was looking at expanding within this country. They were opening up more Hyatts and they said, we need you because, uh, you know, we're expanding. But I just want, wanted to be a bartender and like I said earlier, throughout my hotel journey in five years, I never had the designation of a bartender. So I was a server and then I became a supervisor. But I was bartending behind a bar, but I did not have the title of a bartender. So hotels didn't have the concept of a professional bartender. But I looked at myself more like a professional bartender. And uh, I just wanted to explore the idea of being a freelance bartender and looking at how things would take shape. It was, I think, a little bit of madness as well, you know, as a, as a young boy. That is how it all started. And there has been a lot of verb in this journey. Nothing else explains these magical moments you've had over two decades. 
Tell us some of those really memorable ones. You know, quite a few. So, you know, I spent 25 years now working in a commercial bar, in a hotel bar. And this particular bar in the hotel was also a very interesting bar because I think that gave me the foundation of being a true professional bartender and my idea of a bar. Because this was way back in 95, 96, 97. India was opening up to the world and Hyatt was an international hotel chain. So we had almost 90% plus uh, occupancy throughout the year. And most of these guests were long staying guests. So what happens with a lot of the expats were that every day at six o'clock, they would all be at the bar. And I was this small little country boy who's come in, you know, in a big city, no friends, nothing. What happened is I became their friend and they became my friends. So that was one of those most interesting experiences at the bar beyond just drinks. You know, I learned my drinks over a period of time. I learned how to make cocktails. I learned the art of bartending through those years. But one of the things that happened to me was also being able to interact with a more global audience, okay? An audience which knew what bar culture was. So there have been instances where, uh, you know, I have actually been taught cocktails by the consumer, by the guests who were coming to my bar to enjoy a cocktail or two, right? And uh, it, was, it was a lot of learning along with serving them, you know? And uh, that was one phase. When I became a freelance bartender and started doing mostly weddings, it was a completely different experience because then I was catering to a very different audience, which was mostly domestic audience. And then I also realized there has been a major contrast in the way we perceive alcohol in our country and the way we consume it in our country as compared to how the Westerners would consume it at that point in time. Uh, so it was, a, it was a very interesting experience because you're working in a commercial bar, you go all out as a freelancer and then you experience a completely different atmosphere and a different experience altogether. Remarkable. And one thing about you, Young Dup, you are known for your classic cocktails. You are a maestro at it. Let's start with one of those classic vodka drinks that been really close to your heart that you've been doing it over the years. Take us through that. So one of my all time favorite vodka cocktail is a very simple drink called a Moscow Mule. Now this particular cocktail is very simple to make, but it appealed to the consumer and it was also instrumental uh, because the cocktail was not invented by a bartender. It was basically invented by somebody who was making a ginger beer that was not selling in the American market and a second person who was making vodka that was also not selling in the American market at that point in time because it was more of a brown spirit audience and nobody really looked at alcohol as a white spirit, uh, you know, alcohol, right? And while you were struggling, you meet at a bar and then you speak or extend the story of your struggle and they both combine to make a drink called a Moscow Mule and that particular bar was called the Cock and Bull Bar. Okay. And that is where this particular drink was invented. And what they did is they put it in a copper mug and a slice of cucumber. And the drink, because of the fact that it was served in an old fashioned copper mug, appealed to the consumer. And that kind of helped both the ginger beer as well as the vodka to then gain popularity amongst the consumer. Okay. And this has always been a drink that has done well in bars across the globe even today. So whenever we make, we make a Moscow, Moscow Mew, it, it just works fantastically. So that is definitely one of my favorite cocktails. And of course, the vodka martini as well, which I will be showcasing a little later. Purely because vodka as a spirit gives you all the space to work with different flavors. So it's like an open blue sky. All that you could do is bring in different flavors, stir them, shake them, strain them and put it in a nice glass and serve it straight up. So what I have over here is a small little setup where I have the Magic Moments Verve. This is an apple flavored. And then of course, uh, I have some lime, some ginger beer, uh, a fresh cucumber over there. And I'm going to be making the Moscow Mule. And then in terms of the martini, I'm going to use the green apple Magic Moments and trying to create a green apple martini with the help of the fresh green apple over there. So that's what I'm going to do as far as the cocktail is concerned. Uh, in this setup, uh, Yangu, do tell us a few things that are must-have. So if you're looking at making a cocktail, whether it's a, at a home or at a bar, there are some important elements that is required. First and the foremost, 
we always make cocktails, most cocktails using a spirit. And the reason why we always use a spirit to make cocktail is because spirit is hot drink. It has more percentage of alcohol. It's a distilled product, right? We do not make too many cocktails using wine or beer uh, for the simple reason that it's low on alcohol. So the moment we start mixing it, uh, it will almost taste like a non-alcoholic drink. Okay. Also the fact that wine and beer is alive inside the bottle. It's a fermented beverage. So it becomes a little difficult. That's why even when we drink as a consumer, a person would drink a wine straight out of the bottle in a glass and you drink it without mixing. So same thing applies to beer as well. But with spirits, because of high presence of alcohol in it, you have the option of being able to mix it. So even when you consume it as a, as a straight drink, you like to drink it either with a soda, vodka, cola, juice, all of that is possible. Therefore, we always use spirits to make cocktails. Now amongst spirits, the other important thing that one needs to keep in mind when making cocktail is you have the lighter spirits and you have the darker spirits. A simple answer to that is any spirit that has no color or less color means less character. So for that matter, vodka, most silent of all the spirits. Ideally, a classic vodka would be a colorless, odorless, tasteless spirit. A spirit that has color means it has more character. So there is some amount of aroma present in it. There would be a lot of flavor characteristics that is present in it. So when you have a lighter spirit, easy to mix. Darker spirits, difficult to mix. Okay, so if you are a, a, a very nascent bartender or a, or a very amateur bartender doing something at home, easiest is go for a light spirit, like a vodka, very easy. So vodka tonic, vodka coke, vodka, you know, pineapple, vodka orange, vodka cranberry, it works, right? But if you take a whiskey, whiskey orange juice, not too many people like it. A whiskey pineapple, not too many people like it. So a simple thought process, lighter spirit, easy to mix. If you're trying to do something at home, pick up a nice vodka, right? And then you can pick up any ingredient either from the kitchen or from the refrigerator and make a cocktail. The second important thing is to make sure that you have the basic equipments, right? So whenever you think of a cocktail, you think of a cocktail shaker. Now this one is more of a commercial cocktail shaker. It looks like a lassi glass in the Indian context, a small one and a bigger one. It fits into each other, okay? And it creates a vacuum. Uh, this one over here is a very American style cocktail shaker. This one is called a Boston cocktail shaker. Uh, but otherwise you have different styles of cocktail shakers and you can buy it from any of the home stores, right? The second important thing is to have something like this. It's a muddler. Ideally, it is required because whenever we use fresh ingredients to make cocktails, we always use something like a muddler to extract flavors from fresh ingredients. So a muddler is important. If you do not have a commercial muddler like this, anything that looks like this, it's hard and it's tall, can be usable. So you can make drinks straight in the glass itself. The third and the most important aspect of cocktail making is the peg measure. Okay. And the reason why I always say it's very important is because it keeps you disciplined. True. You know exactly how much you've consumed, yeah. number one. Number two, it helps to bring consistency in the drink. Okay. So you have the exact measure, whether you're making it today, tomorrow, any day. Uh, it always helps you to bring in the same consistency in the cocktail. So the peg measure is also very important. If you do not have a standard peg measure like this at home, one can also use a small little glass, like, like a shot glass or a liqueur glass. Ideally, most liqueur glass are about 60 ml, so which is like a large. So you can take that and then keep changing your measures. Uh, if you're following a cocktail book, most cocktail books will say one ounce uh, or two ounce. In the Indian context, whenever you say one ounce, it actually means almost like a small. It's almost like 20, 29 ml, but uh, our small in the Indian context is a 30 ml, so that one ounce is equal to one small measure. So whenever a book says one ounce, it's 30 ml. If it says two ounce, then a large or a double. Okay, so these are the very basic know-how. The rest is absolutely upon how experimental you are and your idea about flavors. Lovely. So we've got the basics right. We've got a very good spirit with us. Now we'd really like to see you making the Moscow Mule. Sure, absolutely. Let's head to the bar. Sure, let's do. That's 60 ml of Magic Moments Verve.
So this is the Moscow Mule with signature Young Dub twist. Totally. Young Dub, you uh, talk to us about the history into the making of this cocktail. How did it come about? Tell us a bit about the cocktail culture over the years and what is it right now in India specifically? You know, when you look at India and India as a cocktail culture, uh, it wasn't as fancy as it is presently, but I think in the last five, six years, uh, especially in tier one cities, I think cocktail has taken off in a big way. Okay. So every new bar that opens has a lot of cocktail focus. Uh, bartenders are doing some amazing stuff behind the bar and most importantly I think it is the consumer who is now getting very experimental and exploring cocktails to a large extent so people come to the bar especially the new generation of uh, alcohol consumers are mostly cocktail consumers so they come to the bar they ask for their favorite cocktail a lot of people know what they want in a cocktail they can purely understand in terms of the right balance in a cocktail so people know what they want and at the same time, it is also a very nice and experimental audience. So there is no hesitance in terms of trying something new. So it is taking shape quite well. And I think uh, it's only going to get better from here. We all hope it does and grows from strength to strength. But 2012, when you started a cocktail bar, at that point of time, a chef was the star and mixologist was hidden behind somewhere at that point of time to think of a cocktail only bar how did that idea come about what was the confidence what did you notice about the culture of our city that encouraged you and uh, actually gave you the confidence to go ahead and do that so going back to 2012 when i started my first bar which is a neighborhood cocktail bar you know at that time it was a little difficult to start off a cocktail centric bar but me and my partner said, let's do it because it was also a dream project, right? So we knew that the audience were not cocktail consumers. So I, as a bartender with 20 years of ex experience, had to bring something on the table. And it was also equally important to speak about it. So every communication that we had, whether it is a social media communication, whether it is on the ground communication with the consumer, we would actually love to not present a menu to the consumer. I always would actually, you know, if you walked into my bar in 2012, I would never ever give you a bar menu in the first. I would always say, hi, hello, are you in a mood for a good cocktail? And people would then open up, you know, suddenly somebody would say, no, I'm in a mood for a whiskey. And we'd say, why didn't you try a whiskey cocktail? And I think it was all about the confidence with which you spoke about your product. You know, so I think that kind of really worked. So we tried really, really hard for the first six months to almost a year between me and my partner. We were on the ground implementing the concept ourselves and that kind of worked. So it was difficult, but over a period of time, now we have regulars who come to the bar and we don't even have to present them a menu. They just come to the bar and say, can you fix something with gin or something with whiskey? And they always tell the flavor. So we customize all our cocktails. We don't even have to bother about presenting them a menu. So it has gone to that extent from the fact that we started off by uh, in 2012 with no cocktail culture at all. And uh, you said that a lot of first time consumers, new consumers are the ones who start with cocktails. And all of them would have heard of the popular picks. You are very good with classics, but most of your younger audience would have heard of one or the other popular cocktails, such as a martini. Can we have Yang Dub do a martini for us? Yes, absolutely. The next cocktail that I'm going to make is a twist to a classic martini. So I'm going to use Magic Moments Verve. And to that, I'm going to use a little bit of vermouth and freshly chopped green apples and make a nice uh, green apple martini shaken, not stirred. Lovely. Can't wait to see it. of the magic moment verve, green apple. So this is 
the green apple martini again with young dip spin giving spin to classics does it work always you've seen a lot of stuff being done in the name of various nomenclatures that we keep seeing happening at the bar how big a fan are you of those techniques those practices so coming to classics for sure classics are important and it is the base for every cocktail so we move from the classics to new innovations right so this one is a classic it's a different take on the classic with flavors added to it now when we come about new techniques in cocktail making i think cocktail making in the present day is like an open blue sky so it's like you have a canvas and you are an artist and you could paint it whichever way you feel you want to paint it the only important thing to be kept in mind is the right balance so it has to look good it has to taste correct these are the only two elements and that is the present day cocktail it is not like cocktails 20 years ago 20 years ago we had guidelines for cocktails we said this particular cocktail in this particular glass today we don't have those kind of specifications if i can put a bloody mary in a wine glass and make it look appealing to the consumer i think my job is done okay right so when i speak about cocktails in the present day i always i always say that when i present the cocktail to a consumer the first thing he or she has to do is take his phone and take a picture of the drink okay. which goes on to say that it was appealing to the eye mm. right second is it has to appeal to your no so the sense of sight the sense of smell and the sense of taste these three things are very very important to extend a good sensory experience lovely and from being one of the favorite mixologists in the city being one of the bastions of indian mixology to now global acclaim ranked among the top in the world how how has that been tell us about those magic moments and look i think it it definitely gives a great amount of uh encouragement and inspiration and also a sense of accomplishment because i've been in the trade 25 years and also the fact that i've been in a country where alcohol was always a taboo right so now it feels like we've come of age there is tremendous amount of talent in this country and there is also a lot to offer in the cocktail space to the global audience right so i think we've arrived and from here it's only about moving upwards so definitely the recognition means a lot not just to me but to the entire bartending fraternity in india so yes it's it's been a wonderful feeling thank you so much young dude for taking time out and talking to us and taking us on this heady ride thank you very much I hope you've really enjoyed the magic moments that legendary bartender Yang Dup Lama shared with us. We have many such inspiring stories lined up in this series of ours which is Tales Behind Cocktails by Magic Moments Verb Music CD. Keep watching. Thank you. Are you from here? Just visiting. It's my last night actually. That's so many moments. Ek raat mein puri zindagi jee sakte. Try karte. हर पल जी ले तू अभी हर लम्हा है जिंदगी मैजिक इन योर आईज देयर मैजिक इन द एयर तू कैसी रही जिंदगी एवरी मोमेंट वाज मैजिक देयर मैजिक एवरी मोमेंट अ मैजिक मोमेंट